the end is near. Okay, maybe not that near, but just in case, this doomsday vault was built in the middle of the North Pole. Apparently, this vault will help the world rebuild thanks to seeds, lots of money, and some state-of-the-art technology. Let's take a look inside. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault provides protection against both incremental and catastrophic losses of crop diversity in traditional gene banks around the world. Seeds, one of the most important natural resources on Earth, are protected by the Seed Vault. The Kingdom of Norway spent approximately $9 million on building this doomsday vault. The mountain housing the Seed Vault is called Platabet, or Plateau Mountain in English. Svalbard is a kind of insurance policy for other gene banks. Plant breeders and researchers depend on seed banks around the world to obtain varieties with useful traits that they need. If those seed banks later lose their own resources because of natural or man-made disaster, the collections could be restored by getting the copies back from Svalbard. Apparently, the vault creator, Kerry Fowler, doesn't like the name Doomsday much. He prefers the official name of Global Seed Vault, but Doomsday Vault is just cooler. In spite of war, pestilence, and climate change, it stores and protects nearly a million samples of crop varieties from about 5,000 species. The location of the vault is just 700 miles from the North Pole, and the remoteness of it is one of the reasons why the vault is so safe. In addition to conceptualizing the vault, Fowler led the committee that developed the facility's plan and is chair of the International Council that oversees it. He led the global assessment of crop diversity conducted by the UN in the 1990s. Moreover, he has written a book on the global seed vault called Seeds on Ice. It's a good name too, as the seeds are stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Seeds are sealed in specifically designed four-ply foil packages and are placed in sealed boxes and stored in the vault on shelves. Low temperatures and moisture levels ensure low metabolic activity, ensuring the seeds will remain viable for decades, centuries, or even thousands of years. Even if the electricity fails, the seeds will remain viable thanks to the permafrost. The surrounding lands of the Svalbard landscape are sparse and desolate, and if you plan on leaving the vault, don't forget your gun. There are hungry polar bears roaming around, and not just a couple of them. This is a place where there is a 1 to 10 polar bear to human ratio. Oh, and not to mention, the sun doesn't rise for four months during the year. The one upside of the territory is it's great to store seeds and the gorgeous northern lights. When it comes to who owns the Global Seed Vault, well, depositors retain ownership rights over the seeds sent to the facility. The boxes with seeds are sealed by the depositors and are not distributed or given access to by anyone other than those depositors. The Seed Vault has the capacity to store 4.5 million seed samples. Each sample contains an average count of about 500 seeds, so a maximum of 2.25 billion seeds can be stored in the facility. The collection and storage of seeds will continue for some time. When just half of the first of the three vault rooms is filled, it will hold the world's largest collection of seeds from more than 930,000 varieties of food crops. There is no place more remote than the icy wilderness of Svalbard. Apart from the town of Longyearbyen, it is a vast expanse of frozen emptiness. It's the farthest north you can fly on a commercial airline as well. The facility's entrance is a rectangular chunk of concrete that stands out starkly against the snowy landscape, hence the doomsday name. It looks creepy. Svalbard was chosen for the vault precisely because of its remoteness. In essence, they wanted to place the vault away from places where there could be wars. Within the vault is a small room filled with the noise of electricity and cooling systems required to maintain a constant temperature. A concrete tunnel illuminated by strip lighting leads 430 feet into the mountain through one of the doors. At the end of the corridor is a chamber, an added layer of security to protect the vaults containing the seeds. Only one of the three vaults leading from the chamber is in use, and its door is covered in thick ice, hinting at the sub-zero temperatures inside. The seeds are kept in vacuum-packed silver packets and test tubes in large boxes that are neatly arranged on floor-to-ceiling shelves. These boxes aren't worth much, but could hold the key to global food security in the future. 
technological advances have allowed large-scale crop production over the past 50 years, resulting in dramatic changes in agricultural practices. Yet, while crop yields have increased, the diversity of crops has decreased to the point where only a few crops provide 95% of human food energy needs. For example, only 10% of the rice varieties China used in the 1950s are still in use today. Since 1900, over 90% of the U.S.'s fruit and vegetable varieties have been lost. Due to the monoculture nature of agriculture, food supplies are more vulnerable to threats such as disease and drought. Back to the Doomsday Vault, the distance from the front door of the portal building to the back of the vault is approximately 478.7 feet. The width of each vault is approximately 32 feet, and the height is 19.7 feet. Each vault is approximately 88.6 feet long. So what kind of seeds are we protecting? Well, wild and old varieties of seeds lie in the deep freeze of the vault, many of which are no longer used generally. A number of them don't exist outside the seed collections from which they came. In addition, the genetic diversity contained in the vault could provide the DNA traits needed to create new strains for whatever challenges the world or a particular region faces in the future. The 200,000 varieties of rice inside the vault may contain the traits needed to adapt rice to higher temperatures, for example, or to find resistance to new pests or diseases. This is especially crucial in light of climate change. Crop diversity is not generally thought of as fundamentally important, but it is. Crop diversity is almost as important as water and air. It all starts with seeds. Nature surrounds us not only in what we eat, but also in what we wear. There are more than 1,700 gene banks around the world. In order to further agricultural research and develop new varieties, this global network collects, preserves, and shares seeds. In 2008, the Svalbard Vault was opened effectively as a backup for all those varieties. Fowler, the former executive director of the Crop Trust, came up with the idea in the 1980s, but it only became reality after the International Seed Treaty took effect in 2001. The vault was built by the Norwegian government, which operates the vault in partnership with the Crop Trust. It is the goal to locate and house a copy of every unique seed that exists in the global gene banks. Soon the vault will hold its millionth variety. In addition, it works in tandem with those gene banks when their material is lost or destroyed. A large and symbolic gap has only just been filled at the end of one of the rows of seeds inside the vault. Although the black boxes look like the others in the vault, they have traveled a long way. Due to civil war, the International Center for Agricultural Research in the dry areas was forced to flee its headquarters outside of Aleppo, where it had been headquartered. In 2012, the organization evacuated its international staff, but some Syrian researchers stayed behind to rescue equipment and animals. During the fighting, they left behind one of the world's most valuable collections of seeds, including ancient varieties of wheat and barley. The International Center for Agricultural Research, ICARTA, restarted the gene bank in 2015, the first time seeds were withdrawn from the vault. After waking from their frozen slumber, the seeds were planted in Lebanon's Becca Valley and in Morocco, and their offspring were collected, processed, and returned to the vault. The seeds taken out by ICARTA were returned by late February. Aleppo's gene bank was not the first to be threatened by war. A number of Afghan and Iraqi gene banks, along with genetic material not backed up in Svalbard, have been destroyed. But armed conflict is not the only threat. Several have been affected by natural disasters, including the Philippine National Gene Bank, which was damaged by flooding from a typhoon and subsequently by fire. However, a lack of resources is likely to be the biggest threat to the world's gene banks. Due to underfunding, many seeds are not properly protected or stored. Now the Crop Trust is raising funds for an endowment fund to ensure that the world's 1700 gene bank facilities can continue to act as guarantors of global biodiversity. There are some crazy stories about the sacrifices made to keep these seeds safe. Within the vault are some of the most historically significant seeds, the most significant of which come from a collection at St. Petersburg's Vavilov Research Institute, 
one of the world's first collections. About a dozen scientists barricaded themselves in the room containing the seeds during the siege of Leningrad in order to protect them from hungry citizens as the siege dragged on, and a number of them eventually died from starvation. Even though they were surrounded by seeds and plants, they never ate any of it. Such was their belief that the seeds were vital to Russia's recovery after the war and to protect the future of mankind. Dmitry Ivanov, one of the scientists, is said to have died surrounded by bags of rice. In a time of intensified geopolitical tensions and uncertainty, the Svalbard Vault is an unusual and hopeful example of international cooperation. Seeds can be sent to it by any organization or country, and there are no restrictions based on politics or diplomacy. Red wooden boxes from North Korea sit next to black boxes from the United States. Boxes of seeds from Ukraine sit atop boxes of seeds from Russia in the next aisle. The seeds don't care where they're from. They're cold and safe and that's all that really matters. So the Doomsday Vault is extremely remote, but it actually has a neighbor. Located deep in a nearby mine, the Arctic World Archive is its only neighbor a repository that aims to preserve data for world's governments and private institutions. Costing millions to build, the Arctic World Archive lies deep within a decommissioned coal mine in the northernmost settlement of the world. In the event of a global catastrophe, this vault will preserve both physical and digital artifacts for future generations. The archive serves as a data repository, preserving pieces of human cultural relics such as art, literature, and religion. In our digitized world, the vault now contains 21 terabytes of open source code. The Arctic World Archive teamed up with GitHub, a code hosting platform and the world's largest software repository to pull it off. Smartphone operating systems, digital payment platforms, open source software agencies, and many others use GitHub to manage and secure their products. Many of them we interact with every day. The code they're built on is an invisible component of modern culture that's become indispensable to our everyday lives. In data centers around the world, GitHub backs up all of this code, but hard drives aren't disaster proof. As a result, GitHub and the Arctic World Archive sought a more permanent method of archiving data. The Arctic World Archive was created in March of 2017 to preserve the world's most treasured assets. Pickle, a Norwegian data storage company, founded the vault on Spitsbergen. The Arctic World Archive is not the first project of its kind. It is just a few miles away from the Doomsday Vault, which opened in 2008 as a result of an international agreement to preserve plant genetic material. Taking advantage of the Seed Vault's remote location, Arctic World Archive began operations. Now located 300 meters underground in an Arctic mountain, the archive contains manuscripts from the Vatican Library, artifacts from Brazilian soccer history, works by Rembrandt and Munch, and other treasures including popular music, scientific breakthroughs, and political histories. The vault has received deposits from organizations in 17 different countries, including the National Archives of Mexico and Brazil. To begin with, GitHub added thousands of projects to the vault, including source code from the Android operating system and Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. GitHub has deposited 21 terabytes of open source code into the archive this year, all on 186 reels of pickle film, a high resolution photosensitive film specifically designed for longevity and high density digital writing. It was essential to find an offline medium capable of withstanding all foreseeable threats in order to ensure the safety of the source code. Ultimately, chemically stable and unalterable film proved to be the best tool for the job. Pickle created the way of preserving data using film. In this process, files are converted into QR codes and then written onto individual frames on a reel of film. After the reel is processed in a developer cartridge, it goes through an intensive quality assurance check. Film has been transformed into a digital information carrier. You can't really see it with your bare eyes, but if you put it under a microscope, you'll be able to see individual pixels filling up a very high resolution QR code. The first few frames of each reel of film contain instructions in five languages on how to convert QR codes into usable files. Future humans would only need a computer, a camera, and a light source to reconstruct the data. Steel-walled containers are buried deep underground with the film reels. 
With GitHub's deposit into the Arctic World Archive, people would not have to start over in the case of a global disaster. Instead, they could just draw upon this extensive repository of the inner workings of modern society. The film is expected to last up to 500 years in the vault, which will be able to withstand anything mankind faces in the coming years, including climate change. Additionally, the vault is located in one of the most geopolitically stable regions of the world. Our society can be seen in the Arctic Vault, the mistakes we've made, and the achievements we've achieved. It represents mankind's progress and capability. Furthermore, the newly added 21 terabytes of code is as crucial to representing human culture as the physical artifacts that accompany it. The prospect of preserving data through climate change, nuclear war, or whatever else the next 500 years has in store for us may seem daunting. Pickle did not always intend to build an apocalypse-proof archive. A former engineer named Rune Bjorkstrand founded the company, originally called Cinevation, with the goal of preserving film. Bjorkstrand knew that Hollywood had a long history of losing its masterpieces due to insufficient preservation efforts and had an idea. Instead of leaving films on black and white archival film, he considered turning each film into a chunk of data that could be scanned. Each film was boiled down into a magnifiable binary code that looked like QR codes when combined. He then stored a patchwork of these codes in a film cartridge called Picklebox. Bjorkstrand soon saw other applications for his technology. Pickle is a company that allows anyone to store something in the Arctic World Archive for a fee. One of its main selling points is the long-term preservation of material. Svalbard, where the archive is located, is known as one of the most geopolitically secure places in the world, so it's safe. It's not only rugged and remote, but it's been a demineralized and independent region since 1925, shielding it from warfare. The boxes in which the film is stored are virtually indestructible. They've been tested against electromagnetic pulses, extreme nuclear radiation, and minus 196 degrees Celsius. Somehow the boxes got through it all. So yes, the Arctic World Archive is 300 meters deep and incredibly hard to access, but in the event of a global catastrophe, data will be important for humans to get their hands on. So the Arctic World Archive, or AWA, is not concerned with the preservation of plants or animals. The 21 terabytes of open source code represents the world's most treasured works of art, literature, and religion. The film lasts 500 years, long enough, hopefully, for people to survive a doomsday event and enjoy culture without having to start over. So whether it be nuclear war or global conflict, an errant meteor that collides with our planet, doomsday could come in many forms. But we're ready or as ready as we can be. 